Hey, this is Brent with Likens Motorsports. This is a set of eight SCAT I-Beam 6700 Big Block Chevrolet rods. They are going to be part of the rotating assembly for uh, the 465 cubic inch tunnel port street engine that uh, that I showed the head assembly for uh, a week or so ago. So this is going to be the rotating assembly. Um, this is just a really good bang for your buck um, set of parts for for a street build. And the I beam rod. Um, first, let me let me back up a little bit and say there's nothing inherently wrong or cheap or whatever with an I beam rod. Uh, I actually choose to run I beam rods. Uh, when I can because they're generally lighter than H-beam rods. I think most guys see the H-beam rods are more expensive, so they automatically think, um, you know, it must be a higher quality or a higher, higher end part, but that's not, that's not the case. Uh, these rods right here uh, will probably hold, I don't know, 700, 750 horsepower or more. Um, and... You know, the only difference in in that and a higher end rod is, uh, or a higher horsepower capable rod is the rod bolt. So these are just ARP 8740s. You can get these with two 2,000 ARP bolts, which would increase the capacity of the rod. So I generally like lighter parts when I can, and a SCAT 6700 H-beam rod is pretty chunky compared to one of these. I'm gonna show you something else too. This is an Oliver rod, big block Chevrolet rod. These are uh, 15, $1,600. Look at the rod design. It is an I-beam rod, okay? So do not look at an I-beam rod and think, oh, that's a weak you know, piece of junk or whatever. Um, the design in and of itself can be, can be very, very strong. So, you know, when you're paying, um, $470 for a set of SCAT I-beam rods, uh, you know, paying an extra, I don't know, I think they're like 600 bucks for a set of H-beams. It's just not necessary. And you, you do yourself a misservice because, uh, the rods are heavier, which means that you may have to add more weight to balance your crank. So you're you're not getting anything uh, really for your money except for a lot more pain uh, to balance. So go for those I beam rods and uh, don't don't worry about it. don't give it a second thought. You got these in some pretty high end street engines, okay? Now, obviously, when you get up above, you know, 700, 750 horsepower or something, I would recommend uh, either changing the rod bolt or going to another brand like a Molnar rod or something like that. Um, the Molnar and K1 rods are, are uh, I think, even lighter than these, but they also have a smaller cross beam and, and that sort of thing. But best bang for the buck, SCAT I-beam rods. So these are six seven hundred, and we're using a four and an eighth inch steel scat crank. I'm going to show you that next. All right, got this guy down on the floor. I really wish that scat would start or continue to put their cranks in bags. They used to oil them up and put them in bags. Now they spray this sticky cosmoline stuff on it, and then wrap them in some kind of a paper wrapping and it absolutely burns me alive because this stuff is hard to to get off i mean well that one wasn't but some of these you gotta scrape and scrape and scrape see like that one i'm not really doing much and i know i'm whining and things could be worse but you pay you know eleven hundred twelve hundred dollars for a crank and then you gotta spend uh, considerable considerable amount of time trying to clean it up before you can even uh, start micing the journals on it. Now, obviously, a, a jet wash cabinet would probably blow all this off, and it probably will. But uh, it's nice to pull them out of the bag and get going on it. 
So if you're wondering why I went with a four and an eighth inch stroke instead of a four and a quarter stroke, it's because in various engine families, there are combinations that, um, that really work well together. Uh, in the Cleveland and small block Ford, the Windsor stuff world, um, the, the four inch stroke stuff works really, really well. Um, so in the tunnel port world, um, the four and an eighth inch stroke with a factory block, which makes about 465 cubic inches works really, really well. So you can get, uh, about 700 horsepower out of that combination. Uh, we're also dealing with unmodified tunnel port heads. So, um, there's only a certain amount of, you know, flow that they'll make. They'll make about 320 or 330. We really don't want to throw, you know, a huge cubic inch engine underneath those. Um, you don't really gain, uh, you don't really gain that much. So four and an eighth inch stroke, six, 700 rod, um, custom piston from race tech. That's what we're going to be working with. So in this video, um, I'm just going to be uh, weighing these up, weighing the rods, and checking bearing clearances. I can go ahead and get that done. Uh, the block is done at my machinist place, so I'll pick that up Monday, but uh, I can go ahead and be working on this stuff now. All right, so when we use a, a rod balancing fixture, um, it's just pretty much this right here. Um, you want to hold one end of the rod while you weigh the other end. So the little end of this rod is 239.1 uh, grams. So I'll record that on here and go through the other ones. Um, when I'm done, I'll move, I'll move this over to here. And we'll zero it. And then I can flip it around and we can measure, we can re measure the B end. So um, I'm just doing that to uh, make recordings and that way I can maybe swap parts around when I get the pistons and everything and we don't have to start grinding on, on parts. Okay, we got our, all of our rods weighed and um, when I get the pistons and the wrist pins and the rings and all that sort of stuff, I can weigh those two and see if we can match um, rod to rod on, you know, something like a 1-5 pair, 2-6, 3-7, and uh, hopefully get away without having to grind on, on any of this stuff. Uh, the crank measures um, within a couple tenths of all the journals. That, I mean... Some people knock on scat stuff, but the quality there is um, up there with some of the higher end stuff. I mean, even the Bryant crank and this only varied or or varied by, you know, a couple of tenths, two or three tenths too. So scat holds a pretty tight tolerance on their stuff. I've never had any problems with their stuff. I use, use a ton of them too. Um, but... Um, Got all of our rods weighed, and um, since the crank journals are so tight within each other, I'm going to try a pair of, of bearings and check clearance. And uh, we're going to be using Calico coated. Uh, these are Clevite CB7, uh, 743 Hotel X-Ray November for all you uh, pilots out there. Um, a little bit extra clearance and uh, we'll see where this comes in also have some uh, standard clearance coated bearings so we'll get this fine-tuned and uh, see where we come in for clearance I'd like to be somewhere between uh, 2 2 and 2 5 on on rod bearing clearance so we'll see all right when you're checking bearing clearances I would recommend picking up a um, a mic and a good bore gauge. And if you're if you're trying to do it with plastic gauge, you're 
you're introducing a lot of error into into everything. This is the most accurate way of, of doing it. Um, it's repeatable. It's it's uh, like I said, it's very accurate. So even if you snag, you know, um, you can you can find a Mitotoyo or a, a Fowler or um, a Brown and Sharp mic on, you know, brand new for I don't know less than a hundred bucks or so maybe. Um, you need a good two to three inch uh, micrometer and you can pick up just a regular um, bore gauge uh, for for 150 bucks or so and you'll get to use it for for the rest of your life. Um, so we're measuring clearances here. I'm getting about 2728 which is too much for uh, this situation. So remember we have the X bearings in there. If I take one of these bearings out and replace it with a standard bearing, in theory that should drop me a, a half thou, which would put me down um, around 2.2 two or 2.3. Two so let's, let's see how that works for us. Okay, so with our mixed bearing, Between 2.1 and 2.2, so that's a keeper. Um, even if it had, you know, went down to 2.1 or 2.0, 2 um, that would have also been a keeper too. A tenth, one ten thousandth of an inch is, is not a deal breaker for this stuff. I mean, I can sit and I can probably hold either this rod or hold this board gauge with my hand for a few minutes and, and let it warm up. And you can see, uh, you know, a ten thousandth of an inch difference or so. So I'm not really concerned about that. Um, and while we're on that topic, um, you see a lot of guys complaining that, you know, when you mix and match bearings, um, see, this is a lower this is this should be the upper this is a standard with an x this is a standard uh without an x so uh this bearing shell is thinner than this bearing shell and everybody says oh you need to put the thicker bearing shell in the upper end of the rod so you have more thickness uh, guys, we're, we're literally splitting, uh, hairs 10, 10 times or so. So, you know, we're talking about a half a thou, uh, difference in between these two. So, uh, I have never, ever, uh, put any, you know, stock into making sure the thicker one is on one side or, or whatever. So that is, uh about 20 years of, of engine building experience uh, behind that. So, um, yeah, don't worry about it. So what I'm going to do now is um, we're going to mix and match X and standard. We're going to go through the rest of these seven rods and check all of our bearing clearances to make sure that they are what they need to be. All right, so all eight bearing clearances have been checked, and we they all came in within uh, two two and two four, so just excellent uh, set of rods and crank journal and bearings were all uh, right in there. So one thing I will note: these are numbers four and eight rods. I picked it up after I had checked the clearance and noticed that one bearing on each one of these rods stood up a lot higher than the other one, and so after, you know, triple digit numbers of engines, you know, I'm used to seeing things the, 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 the way that they should be. So when I picked this up and I I'm like, oh, that ain't right. So I took uh, both these rods and pulled the caps off and sure as the world, I had an upper and an upper and a lower and a lower. So... I make mistakes. Uh, the good thing is that I caught it um, before really we even started engine assembly. So 
uh, just be extra careful, extra diligent to check all your stuff. It, you know, if you're if you're not sure what I'm talking about, a lot of your performance bearings have an upper and a lower, and they're labeled like that. So uh, obviously, they each have to go into their respective spot. If you put uh, an upper and an upper, the way that the tang on the bearing is is made, it will kick one bearing out like you'll have like say this one right here and this one will be all the way up here to the chamfer so it's very noticeable not a good thing so what i'll probably do is i'll probably check all the other ones just to make sure that my dumb hind end didn't do anything wrong on the other ones but uh all of our rod bearing clearances are checked and uh, we are uh, all systems go for uh, assembly when, when the pistons get here and we can balance the crank and, and go. So thank you guys for watching this. Um, these are basic engine building, basically, um, skills. I mean, you have to be able to check rod bearing clearances, main bearing clearances. You have to be able to assemble cylinder heads. So you know, if you can do all these things this way, um, then then you have a really good uh, chance of, of having a really successful, you know, engine build. Uh, that's why I do these videos, just so I can give you guys an, a rough idea of, of how everything goes together. But thanks for watching, and uh, as always, appreciate you and your comments, and I hope you're having a good week, and I'll see you next video.